If you are struggling with being more organized or intentional around the holidays this year, then I have a special treat for you today. My guest is going to be Morgan Tyree of Morganize With Me, and I teased this on my stories yesterday, but Morgan is going to be coming on today to talk to us about all things holidays. We're going to be talking about decorations. We're going to be talking about, here she is, about traditions. We're going to talk, be talking about expectations around the holidays. And if you don't know Morgan yet, let me give you a quick little intro. Hey, Morgan. Hi. <laughs> so, hi. I'm so glad you can join me today. I was just about to intro you and let everybody know that, first off, you and I met, well, met <laughs> online. It feels like a lifetime ago. Um, I think that I was pretty early on in the blogging journey when you and I somehow, probably on a blog hop or something back in the day, got to know each other. Um, but it's been so cool watching your journey and seeing everything that's happened for you, everything that's unfolded. If you guys don't know Morgan, she is an organizing expert. She is a time management maven. She's got two books out right now on hospitality and on um, time management. And I'm so excited to have her join us today because we're going to be talking about all things related to the holidays. And to kick things off, we're going to start with decor, which is one of my favorite topics. I understand not everybody loves decorating, but I do. <laughs> so I would love to hear some of the tips that you're giving to your clients or that you're actually using in your own home um, as it comes to, you know, holiday decorations. We've got, I don't know, I've got, I've got too much stuff, but I've been scaling back over the years, but I would love to hear what you have to share with us on this topic. Yes, definitely. So first, I just want to give everyone permission to decorate in the way that is fulfilling for them because you know we all have a continuum of preferences as as far as like i have a friend who talks about having a clutter capacity i think we all have a holiday decorating capacity yes. i'm probably on the minimalist side um but it's really up to the individual but what i suggest is to still no matter if you're over the top or if you're sort of on the minimalist side to have a plan and what I mean by that is some sort of boundary, whether that's one storage area for all the holiday decor or a certain number of bins, but some boundary can help year after year, not too much accumulation. And then piggybacking on that, I would say when we're decorating for the holiday, it is the best time to do that inventory check as you pull out some broken pieces or mismatched or why do I still have this, you know, <laughs> cheesy decoration? Because our, our trends and styles change, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I really practice that one in one out rule. I was just at a store this morning, you know, things are 50% off already. You know, avoid acquiring more without assessing what needs to all go out. And um, so going back to if you have a plan and have some boundaries that should help you as you decorate and then at the end of the season, when you go to like pick it all up and put it away, um, stay within that boundary as well. I love this idea so much. Uh, I find that when I'm getting my stuff out every year, there are things that I don't use, but I end up just leaving them in the bins. They go back in the storage. And, and that idea for just having like a defined space is brilliant. We have a little bit of space in an outbuilding now that we're mm -hmm. allocating just for Christmas stuff. And every year I feel like my husband's like, okay, we're overflowing, Allison. Now we've got to go back into the attic again, but I need to just like shrink it down. I'm going to yeah. do better with that. But yes, yeah, just really kind of getting rid of the stuff that we have and, and stop accumulating it over the years. I always think, oh, I'm going to use it again. But the fact is, if I don't use it one year, and, and this is kind of like an analogy with my closet, if I don't wear something for, you know, a year or two, What's mm -hmm. the point of bringing it back out season after season, year after year? It's just time to, you know, either donate it or sell it or get rid of it if it's something that can't be donated or sold. So, yes, yeah, so those are awesome tips. Um, mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about traditions and holiday traditions. I know you've got some advice for us on that and um, just really where we can be more intentional in focusing our time on some traditions or, around the holiday season. Okay. So you and I both have older kids, I know. So we have sort of gone through, you know, the toddler years, middle school years, and we're now on the later end, I suppose. But one thing I try to encourage moms or parents, especially if your kids are younger, to remain practical around traditions. I was guilty of maybe overestimating my energy and motivation. <laughs> and so not that I'm not saying don't create traditions, 
but really think of how to make them practical and doable. So as the parent, you're not scrambling to make it happen for you. And then on that same note, I would say I've learned as my kids have gotten older, we have to pivot a little bit with some of the traditions because um, just for a variety of reasons, whether schedules have changed, you know, interests change. And so just giving yourself permission, I think traditions are so important, but sometimes we can move a little more towards being idealistic and maybe away from being realistic. And so finding that sweet spot and um, just really being intentional. And if you're a young parent, Think of what, if you want to be doing it for the next 15 or 20 or how many ever years, you know, because yeah. I see the elf on the shelf, which I think is adorable, but I'm like really glad I didn't, I'm not that, I mean, it's fun. It's, you know, super creative, but I'm like, that would have maybe sent me over the edge. <laughs> it did. It did. It's so funny. I'm glad that you mentioned that because when you were saying that, that's the first thing that popped into my head. I'm like, thank you, Jesus, that we have graduated out of the elf on the shelf because it was so stressful. I found that my husband and I were just constantly trying to come up with ideas and then we forget to move the elf and we'd have to make up the story why the elf didn't move. And it was all just like, it was just too much. And I feel like we put so much pressure on ourselves and think we've got to continue these traditions because these are the things that our kids are going to associate with our holidays. But we've done something over the past few years where with our older kids, we sit them down now and say, what are your favorite things that you've done with us over the past like two to three years? Mm -hmm. And then we sit down with our calendar and we actually put all of those things in the calendar on the weekends between, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas to make sure that everybody gets their bases covered. And sometimes it's something just as simple as I love it when we go to Starbucks and get coffees and drive around and look at Christmas lights, or I love it when we have our evening in where we watch Christmas movies, or I loved it that time when we went out to a fancy restaurant and had a dinner. Like we, we don't have to constantly have the same things that are happening year after year just because we did them, but really just kind of calling it down and focusing on what each kid has the best memories associated with has made life just infinitely easier. And I find just as the kids get older, it just gets easier anyway. <laughs> yeah. And I like that you said that sort of having the conversation because this is a quick little story. We did a thing when the kids were young, we would always do a family gift and it could be you know, one year it was tickets to see a play. One year it was a trip to Disneyland. So you have to be careful. We learned you don't raise the bar. And even <laughs> if we're like, what's our family gift? I'm kind of like, I think we've moved past the family gift. Because, you know, now, I don't know about you, but when my kids are older, they want high ticket items. I'm like, you know, family gift was like when we were all like interested in the same thing. Because, you know, when your kids are younger, there's a different commonality, I think, sometimes with activities. And I, so I'm like, I think I need to have that conversation that maybe the family gift is not quite the same or you know I don't know I think the conversations help to clarify for sure yeah and I think it's just about setting those expectations for them that this isn't always going to be this way every year or you know just having the conversations <laughs> for sure and speaking of expectations uh yeah. the holidays are full of expectations and I think that a lot of us even get to the point myself included where we have kind of like a holiday letdown afterwards because we just build up all of these expectations for the way that everything's supposed to go and having this picture perfect, amazing Christmas and how, you know, we just, we build that up in our minds. So what advice do you have for us around expectations in the holidays? Well, yeah, I was going to actually say what you, what you just shared is to really talk to each family member on the front end. And right now is a good time. What's the one thing you really like at the holidays? And, and like you said, schedule it in and be intentional and sort of make those the top priority than trying to hit everything. You know, but because I think each family member will have their own kind of nostalgia or things that matter. So mm -hmm. that's a good way to set some expectations. And I think that feels much more manageable if you're a family of four or five or six to just have that many activities versus like, you could fill up your calendar with a holiday event every day if you wanted to. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then I would say, um, we, like I said before, too, just really communicating and talking things through is always helpful, especially with hosting or visiting or traveling and just communicating what your capacity is this year, what you're able to give. And, you know, I, you mentioned I wrote a book on hospitality and a lot of my messaging in that is, is to really show up for people and to be present. I think in this day and age, that's something we all are seeking. And so, yes, Christmas is, and the holidays are about giving gifts, but it's, I think giving time and giving presence has such a, um, a much more of a ripple effect, you know, I shouldn't say more, but you know, it's just such a gift to really give people um, the best of what you have and to show up. So that's what I would encourage everyone to do. 
Thank you. Yes, I was actually going to ask you, I, I have your book right here on my shelf. <laughs> um, so if you are hosting an event or a gathering, what are some quick and easy, simple little tips for us to make it a little bit less stressful? I mean, I love hosting, but then I find that the week leading up to it, I just have myself so frazzled that when the time comes, I'm not able to just be fully in the moment and enjoying my guests, which is the whole reason why I'm doing it to begin with. So I'd love to hear your advice on that. Yeah, well, I think there's a couple of things just real practical to, I like to do 50 cooking and, and buying basically. So, you know, if you're a super chef and that's your wheelhouse, great. But, you know, I think time is always of the essence. So you can prepare stuff ahead of time, buy some pre-made stuff and then delegate. I'm all, in my book, I talked a lot about delegating. So I think sometimes if you're hosting, you sort of take everything on, but you know, people don't mind bringing, bring, bring a bag, bring an appetizer. I think that, when we all pitch in, it actually creates even more of a experience. And then you're also, um, you're gonna, when people are off, when they're asked to bring things, they're gonna bring things they like too. So it just kind of helps all that, all the preferences and all that. So just, um, you know, again, remembering that being with people and being present is more important than the presentation. I think that if you're a hostess with the mostest and that's your cup of tea, that's wonderful, but just make sure people always stay ahead of that. Um, presentation because I think sometimes a lot of the best memories are made with sort of unplanned hiccups or challenges or last minute get togethers, you know, just ask your neighbors to come over and watch a Christmas movie. Keep it simple. That, those mm. are kind of my go-tos. I love that. Yeah. So share the load. And then sometimes the unplanned things end up being the ones that are the most memorable and the most fun. I always talk about this with our vacations, the day, the worst day of vacation for us tends to be the one that we laugh about the most after the fact. So just take that pressure off yourself, be yes. in the moment and go with the flow, right? <laughs> Easier said than done. <laughs> sure. And I was going to say one more thing too, is that I think that extending an invitation is such a gift in and of itself. And so if you can make your activity or your hosting super simple, whether that's we're going to do s'mores in the backyard and hot chocolate and just invite your neighbors over or, you know, do some last minute. We're going to watch a football game or whatever. You know, I think just inviting people and opening up your home, that is such a gift. And everyone wants to be invited. And this is a good time to gather and celebrate. So take advantage of that. Absolutely. I love that. Great tips. Thank you so much, Morgan. You guys follow Morgan and Morganize with me and tell us where else we can find you online. Yes, so my website's morganizedwithme.com and everything else is Morganized With Me. So come follow. And if anyone has questions about organizing or whatever, they can always DM me. So thank you, Allison. Thank you, Morgan. And her book, Your Hospitality Personality, is amazing. If you're hosting any events, I highly recommend that you pick it up. Thank you. I hope it gives people a lot of permission. That's what we need to be. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Morgan. I appreciate your time. Yes, good to see you. America. You too. Bye. Bye.